Hello everyone. In this video, we will read and understand Class 8 Chapter, A Short Monsoon Diary, written by renowned author Ruskin Bond. Do you write a diary? What is a diary? A diary is a record of personal experiences written by a person day after day over a long period of time. One can also use a diary to note down things that one plans to do immediately or in future. One of the most famous diaries published as a book is the diary of Anne Frank written by a teenager during Nazi's Holocaust. The book has been published in various languages and is a bestseller. I would recommend all the teenagers to read this book where a teenage girl has shared her experiences. In this chapter, there are a few extracts from Ruskin Bond's diary in which he portrays the silent miracles of nature and life's little joys and regrets. Ruskin Bond lives in the hilly region of Landor and Masuri and we always feel the touch of the place where he lives in his write-ups. In this chapter, through entry in his diary on various dates during monsoon, Ruskin Bond has told us how nature surprises us silently with its miracles and how it gives us happiness as well as regret. Let's read the chapter. June 24, the first day of monsoon mist. And it's strange how all the birds fall silent as the mist comes climbing up the hill. Perhaps that's what makes the mist so melancholy, means sad. Not only does it conceal, that means hide the hills, it blankets, to blanket means to cover, them in silence too. Only an hour ago the trees were ringing with bird song, and now the forest is deadly still as though it were midnight. Through the mist, Bijo is calling to his sister. I can hear him running about on hillside, but I cannot see him. The first entry of diary in the chapter is on June 24, which is the first day of monsoon mist. Mist means fog. During monsoon, valleys and mountains are often filled with foggy clouds, which are very near to the surface. As the mist comes climbing up the hill, the hill becomes silent. And this is what makes the hill so sad as it does not only hide the hills, but it also covers them with silence. Till now, the trees which were ringing with birdsong, now the entire forest is deadly still. That means completely silent as though it was midnight. Although the author can hear Biju, Biju is a famous character from Ruskin Bond's stories, which he often use in his stories. Biju is calling his sister, but the author says that he can only hear him running about the hillside, up and down the hillside, but he cannot see him as everything is concealed due to fog. June 25, some genuine early monsoon rain, warm and humid and not that cold high altitude stuff we have been having all year. The plants seem to know it too. And the first cobra lily rears its head from the ferns as I walk up to the bank and post office. On June 25, the author experiences some early monsoon rain, which is warm and humid and which is not that cold high altitude rain, which often hilly people experience throughout the year. So the rain is warm and humid and it is not cold. The plants also seem to know it and the first plant of monsoon, cobra lily, it comes from behind the ferns. Ferns is a flowerless plant with feathery green leaves. As the author walks to the post office, he saw a cobra lily emerging, growing. The mist affords a certain privacy. Mist affords a certain privacy because it conceals everything and people are not aware of who, who one is and where he is going. So it gives privacy to people as well as to nature. A schoolboy asked me to describe the hill station and valley in one sentence and all I could say was a paradise that might have been. Once a schoolboy asked the author to describe the hill station and valley in just one sentence and all the author could say was a paradise that might have been. That means the hill station and valley are as beautiful as a paradise. Paradise means heaven. Still, they are not paradise. Hill stations and valleys are beautiful places. They are full of scenic beauty. But the people of hilly areas, they have their own struggle. They have their own joys and regret. June 27. The rains have heralded the arrival of some seasonal visitors, a leopard and several thousand leeches. Heralded means announced or brought the news off. So with the coming of rain, seasonal visitors like leopard and leeches have also started emerging. 
Leeches are small blood sucking animals. Yesterday afternoon, the leopard lifted a dog from near the servants' quarter below the school. In the evening, it attacked one of Biju's cows but fled at the approach of Biju's mother who came screaming imprecations. Imprecations means curses. So last afternoon, a leopard took a dog from near the servants' quarter which was below the school and in the evening, the leopard attacked one of the cows of Biju but it ran away from the place when Biju's mother came shouting. As for the leeches, I shall soon get used to a little bloodletting every day. Bloodletting means losing blood. It was a practice years ago that leeches were used to remove blood from body of a patient as they suck blood. Other new arrivals are the scarlet minivets. These are bright red colored bird like cuckoo and the females are yellow. Flitting silently among the leaves like brilliant jewels. Flitting means moving swiftly and lightly. No matter how leafy the trees, these brightly colored birds cannot conceal themselves, although by remaining absolutely silent, they sometimes contrive to go unnoticed. Contrive means manage to go unnoticed. Along came a pair of drongos, unnecessarily aggressive, chasing the minivets away. Drongos are songbirds. So other arrivals along with leopard and leeches are scarlet minivet. They are very bright and no matter how leafy the trees are, they are not if they cannot hide themselves behind the trees. Although by remaining completely silent, they can sometimes manage to go unnoticed. And along with Minivet Scarlet comes Drongos who are very aggressive and they try to chase the Minivets away. A tree creeper moves rapidly up the trunk of the oak tree, snapping up insects all the way. Now that the rains are here, there is no dearth of food for the insectivorous birds. A tree creeper, another word, it also comes rapidly and goes up to the tr trunk of the oak tree. Snapping up means eating up all the insects that comes in its way. And now since there is rain, there will be no dearth. That means no lack of food for birds, insectivorous birds, birds who eat insects. Second part, August 2. All night the rain has been drumming on. Drumming means falling noisily. On the corrugated tin roof. Corrugated means wavy shaped tin roof. There has been no storm, no thunder, just the steady swish of tropical downpour. So it was not storm, it was not a very heavy rain, there, there has been no noise, but continuous flowing of tropical downpour, continuous rain it has been. It helps me to lie awake at the same time, it doesn't keep me from sleeping. So because of continuous sound of the rain, the author cannot sleep, he lies awake. But because of the musical sound of the rain, he also feels sweepy, sleepy. So he stays awake, but at the same time, he feels sleepy as well. It is a good sound to read by. The rain outside, the quiet within. And although tin roofs are given to springing uncountable leaks, uncountable means unexplainable, there is a feeling of being untouched by and yet in touch with the rain. As per author, the sound of rain falling on the tin roof is a good sound which can be read. There is rain outside, there is sound outside, but within the author there is complete silence. His house, his home and his heart, everything is completely silent. And tin roofs, they are known for being, for leaking, but the author's house is not leaking. He is, un he is not touched by the rain, he is not wet by the rain. Still he is in touch with the rain because he has been conti continuously hearing the sound of the rain. And with rain and with this kind of silence, a lot of thoughts emerge in the mind of the author. August 3. The rain stops. The clouds begin to break up. The sun strikes the hill on my left. A woman is chopping up sticks. I hear the twinkle, the tinkle of cowbells. In the oak tree, a crow shakes the raindrop from his feather and cows disconsolately. Disconsolately means unhappily. Water drips from a leaking drain pipe and suddenly clean and pure, the song of whistling thrush emerges like a dark sweet secret. Trush means a small songbird. From the depths of the ravine. Ravine means valley. So on August 3, the rain has stopped and the clouds have begun, started parting. And people have started coming outside to do their work. A woman is chopping. He can hear the sound of tinkling of cowbells. He can hear the song sound of a small songbird which is coming from the valley and also the cows the sound of cow which is looking unhappy. August 12, endless rain and permanent mist. 
we haven't seen the sun for eight or nine days. Everything damp and soggy. Nowhere to go. Pace the room. Look out of the window at a few bobbling umbrellas. At least it isn't cold rain. The hillsides are lush as late monsoon flowers begin to appear. While balsam, dahlias, begonias and ground orchids. So from August 3 to August 12, there has been continuous rain for eight or nine days and it has been permanent mist. And therefore, the author has not been able to go out. Everything is wet, it is damp, it is soggy and there is no place to go. So the author is just pacing, that means moving about in his room and he can just look out window with people, people with their umbrellas. But it is not a cold rain and the hillside is full of lush late monsoon flowers like balsam, dahlias, begonias and orchids. These are all monsoon flowers of hilly areas. Now the last day of August, August 31st and the lush monsoon has reached its peak as the seeds of cobra lily they have started turning red which signifies that the rain has come to an end and in few days the ferns will also start turning yellow but right now they are still firm green and they are upright that means they are straight. Ground orchids, mauve lady slipper and white butterfly orchids put on fashion display on the grassy slopes of the Landor. Landor is the place where the author lives. So there are different kind of flowers on the ground. While the Haliyas, red, yellow and magenta rear their heads from the rocky crevices where they have taken hold. Crevices are narrow openings on the cracks in the rocks or wall walls. So the Haliyas, uh, red, yellow and magenta they are coming up from the narrow openings of rocks and walls. Snakes and rodents flooded out of their holes and burrows, take shelters in roofs, attics and go-downs. A shrew week of eyesight blunders about the rooms much to the amusement of the children. And animals like snakes and rodents who live in burrows are there now coming out and taking shelters in roofs and attics as their burrows are filled with water. And a shrew which is known as chichundar in Hindi. My, who must have weak eyesight, it roams around the room much to the entertainment of the children. Don't kill it, admonishes their grandmother. Chichandars are lucky, they bring money. Admonishes means scolds. So grandmother scolds the children that don't kill Chichandars as they are lucky, they bring money. And sure enough, I receive a check in mail. Not a very large one, but welcome all the same. And sure to the, the fact that Chichandar bring money, the author has received a check in the mail which is not very large but still all kind of money is welcomed. October 3, now from monsoon rain, it is straight winter rain and it is snowing at the higher altitude. And after an evening hailstorm, there has been hailstorm in the evening. The sky is suffused with a beautiful golden light. Suffused means full of. The sky is now full of beautiful golden light as the sky is clear. January 26, January is winter season. It is winter rain in the hills and in the hushed silence of the house. There is silence in the house. The author is quite alone. His friend who was there had gone and the author now feels very lonely, very quiet and he sits in complete silence. There is silence within surrounded by the rhythm, rhythm of the rain. Again, the same kind of silence and outside there is rhythm music of the rain. The steady drift of water on leaves, on lemons, on roof, drumming on drenched the helias and window panes. Now water is coming everywhere, drenching everything. While the mist holds the house in dark keris. Keris means touching or holding lovingly. So again there is mist and the whole house is gripped in the keris of the mist. As I pause near a window, the rain stops and starts again. So as author went near the window the rain it stops it comes again and the trees are no longer green but they are gray menace me with their loneliness menace means threaten now the trees are also threatening with loneliness because all the leaves have gone march 23 and it is the last entry of author's diary in the chapter late march end of winter and the author can see the blackest ever cloud he has ever seen squatted over Masuri, that means covering Masuri. And then it hailed marbles for half an hour. For about half an hour, it rained heavily. Nothing like a hailstorm to clear the sky. It was not like a hailstorm, and the sky got clear. And even as the author writes, he can see a rainbow forming. 
This was the last entry of author's diary in the chapter. Now you can go through the comprehension check. All the answers are written here. If you have listened to the chapter carefully, it will be very easy for you to answer the questions. Go through the question answers and cross check. This was about the chapter. I will see you in my next video. Till then, bye bye. Take care.